Their first down out of bounds near the 15 yard line. Good decisions there and uh, boy when you look at players of the game for the uh, East squad he's certainly right up there at the top on offense. Yeah. I think we might have a penalty. So that one might come back. Thought I might have seen a clip out there in the flat. It looked like uh, the one block that really sprung him might have been a problem, but uh, maybe no, not. No, doesn't look like that's going to be the issue. Was no. it against the West? Apparently. I'm sure. When they pick up the flag. I think they thought there was an ineligible yeah. lineman downfield, and uh, they picked up the flag. So. Lawless is deceptive. I mean, he's got that quick first step, you know, to make people miss him. He's not, definitely not the fastest runner downfield in the open field, but he's deceptive quickness with those first steps to get open. So Will McEwen will get a couple on the first down carry. As the West still leading the East 21 to 19, but the East deep in West Territory. Also, don't forget to stop by Tuscarawas with Central Catholic High School this weekend for the Central Catholic Festival. A lot of food, fun, great times, games, you name it, they've got it. The Central Catholic Festival. The pass to Sunderland. Sunderland inside the 10, down to about the seven yard line. It'll be third down and about four. Lawless looks across to the inside. McEwen wide open. Yeah, just threw it behind him. Jake Conrad knew he was beat. Kind of gave a little finger wag to Will McEwen there, but uh, yeah. I think he knew he was in trouble. Now you got fourth down. Big play coming up here to you know, drive the ball the way down the field here and maybe not get anything out of it. Well, the East has always seemed to find someone in the far corner of the end zone. That would be up to the right side of your screen. That one is going to be caught, and that is going to be close. Yeah, I think he got it. He got it down to the four-yard line, and that is a huge play as it will be first in goal for the East. They seem to like to get that, uh, you know, the far side of the field, the uh, the wide side of the field on those plays with the three wideouts. They overload that side, you know, and make it so they don't have enough people to cover everybody. Then they run McEwen out of the backfield, either on that flare or out into the flat and look for him, you know, for the uh, to catch the passes and so forth. Nightig nearly had it in the area of the sideline there. They'll say he was out of bounds. It'll be second down. It's in incomplete. You can see a little cut in, pull up, try to throw to the pylon. Ooh, he might have caught it. He just might not have established himself in Can't bounds. see where his foot is on that one, but uh, he had a foot down, but uh, we couldn't see if his was, you know, half right. inside and half on the line. So uh, officially inning crew was right there on it. So they know it was incomplete. It'll be second down and goal from the four. McEwen's going to take the snap. He's got some running room, and he stopped short of the goal. It looked like he was rocking forward yeah. there a little bit before the snap. Got away with it. And that will be the end of the third quarter. The West leading the East 21 to 19. Welcome back with fourth quarter action here from the 33rd Times Reporter Charities All-Star football game in a moment. Stay with us here on Big Time Sports. Baldy State Bank has been serving the Baldy and surrounding areas since 1902. 
As the local bank, we use your deposits right here in our community to help meet the borrowing needs of your friends and neighbors. Stop in one of our convenient offices located on the Village Square in Baldick, across from Garraway High School in Sugar Creek, or inside the New Bedford Country Store, and let us show you friendly hometown banking at its best. The Baldick State Bank, member FDIC, an equal housing lender. And with that rebound, Miller has a triple-double. Miller's in trouble. Scotty, he just made team history. Double, Mellow Tones, double. Do you have cotton in your ears? He's getting cheers, but Scotty, he's our Manor MVP. I'm calling a flagrant foul on this play-by-play. -play. You've got to get to Dr. Guerin and get your hearing checked. What? If you're missing plays due to hearing loss, make an appointment with Dr. Kurt Guerin, Dr. Melanie Pence, or Dr. Nick Grosh. They'll have you back in the game in no time. And that's the end of the half, and we've got pizza and sandwiches in the hospitality room. I heard that, Naughty Scotty. I bet you did, Charlie. I bet you did. Since 1994, people have enjoyed the storage options from Weaver Barns of Sugar Creek, and nobody has more options than Weaver Barns. 12 styles to choose from small playhouse sizes to large storage barns, and nobody builds a better barn than Weaver. All Weaver Barns come with standard 25-year shingles as well as a continuous ridge vent and soffit system, and the special accessories available can make your Weaver Barn reflect your style. For more information, call Weaver Barns toll-free at 888-289-4940 or visit us online at weaverbarns.com. Danielle Tedesco is a registered pharmacist who has joined the pharmacy staff at Ducini Drug on East High Avenue in New Philadelphia. She will become the pharmacy manager where her duties will include receiving, verifying, and filling prescriptions. Danielle will also play an active role in advising patients about prescription and over-the-counter drugs. Danielle can be reached at the pharmacy by calling 330-364-5519. Ducini Drug, 315 East High Avenue in New Philadelphia. Ready to go with fourth quarter action as the East looking to take the lead here. On third down and goal, the handoff to McEwen. Looks for the end zone, touchdown East. A one yard run by Will McEwen. So the East, up 25-21. Got to go for two. That's what they're going to do here. So we'll see what they come up with here. Lawless. Lobs it in the corner of the end zone. Nobody there. It's incomplete. And that leaves it at 25-21. So the East gets down there, gets the lead. They lead it by four. So the West is going to have to come back, score a touchdown if they're going to win this game. Might have to score more than one. Yeah. You know, you, you know it, uh, the way the second quarter went, you know, kind of lulled there in the first part, and then all of a sudden they scored uh, 20 points in the last half of the second quarter. So might look forward to some fireworks here in the fourth quarter. You know, it's a little bit unusual, too, a situation like uh, the East has now. Uh, it's not too often you see a quarterback go the whole distance in, in one of these games, but I think just because of the way the roster's made up, it's just happened that way. You know, and, and with uh, Cody Cox getting hurt uh, for them, which could have been another weapon for them because you saw him play very well for New Philadelphia last year. I mean, and Coach Zontini's comfortable with this quarterback because it was his quarterback for last year. So I don't think he's, you know, going to push any buttons by not uh, – you know, I think the only other person on the roster that might play quarterback for the uh, the East uh, uh, would have been uh, uh, Doug Wood from Malvern possibly. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's just happenstance. Uh, Cody Cox was hurt, I believe, uh, 
has a hamstring injury and uh, unable to play. Uh, but they were pretty well stacked at the quarterback spot. Yeah. I'm sure that there wouldn't have been a problem sharing time there. It just uh, didn't work out that way. Yeah, you know, and you have the West to choose three quarterbacks tonight. You know, Rankin, uh, Barr, and Marcus Mamarella. So Tyler Sunderland will kick it away for the East squad. And it'll be a squib kick. The West is going to fight over it. That's uh -oh. usually not a good sign. On the run, Jeremy Anderson with a nice return out to midfield before Tyler Sunderland makes the stop. Great field position. That's not what you want to happen when you squib it down in there like that. So the West is in good position. East with a uh, lot of respect for the West speed. You know, if they can get one of those uh, time-consuming drives going, eat up a big chunk of the clock and take the lead here. Either way, both teams have to stay away from the turnovers. Had too many turnovers in the first half. This half, we've only had one, so. The handoff to Conrad. Conrad battles forward to about the 46-yard line for a gain of three. And this is where the rubber is going to meet the road. This is where the hitting is going to start. And, uh, you know, the competition heats up right now. Because this is where it's going to be won or lost right here in the, the next 11 minutes. Yep, down to crunch time. 25-21 East leading the West. Four wide out set here. Marcus Mamarella at the spot. And on the run is Marcus Johnston still on his feet with a spectacular run down inside the 20-yard line to the 19. Man, what a great run. What a great run that was. Spectacular is all you can say. We didn't see him a whole lot. He was part of our big-time sports package this last uh, season, but certainly... Uh, has shown a lot of athletic ability and uh, shows he's a pretty darn good running back as you get a look here on the Weaver Barnes Rewind. Man, he just ma he makes people miss. Finally, Trent Bird got there, brought him down, but a nice gain to the 17-yard line. Great field position here for the West. As Mamarella again, the handoff. And not much there. Marcus Johnson piling up some yards now. That's two big ground gainers he's had. That 51-yard run for the touchdown in the uh, first half and now ripped off about 27, 28 yards. Uh, right there, so he's compiled 80 yards just in two carries. So it'll be second down and eight. As Memorella in the shotgun, takes the snap, drops back, looks to the outside. He's got a man there. And Ricky Maz will make the catch as the tackle made by Zane Derrick. About one yard short of the first down. So third down and two. And the good thing for the West, they're continuing to chew up a little bit of clock here. Yeah, they, uh, you know, Marcus Johnson ripping off, making some great runs like that. And then they, uh, you know, just picking away here, using the clock, like you said, Scott, and try to get it in the end zone to take the lead again. Third and two. Inside the 10-yard line, Mamarella will take it himself and should have the first down around the 6-yard line. Mamarella gets up and uh, kind of walk around gingerly on that ankle. So 
So first and goal from the six yard line. The finest of the finest. Playing in tonight's 30-30 annual Times Reporter Charities All-Star Football Game. Glad to have you with us here on Big Time Sports. Scott Robinson and Bruce Witter helping you kick off the high school football season. Mamarella looks for the goal line, and it's a touchdown for the West. And he got hammered right at the goal line, and that's exactly what you didn't want to see happen in this game. He absolutely got leveled. I'm going to get a replay. Let's take a look in the Weaver Barnes rewind. And, uh, oh, man, you don't want to see this. Not when he's playing American Legion baseball. Uh, it's supposed to be a pass. He looks. Receiver's covered. He sees the opening up inside. Makes a great cut. Heads for the end zone. 57. Yeah, it was Justin Wrench that absolutely laid out Mamarella, and he is still down. And wasn't it wasn't a cheap shot? It was just a good hit, right at the goal line. He's up. Yeah, that's good news for everybody. Shake shook the cobwebs out. He's probably the bell's ringing a little bit. He'll be okay. I'm guessing there's a lot of people that are hoping he, they just pull him out of the rest of this game. <laughs> yeah, especially Coach Baxter for the <laughs> yeah. American Legion team. Exactly. <laughs> so you can I can see Coach Brock's cell phone ringing right now. Yeah, you know, those are the things that the kids want to play. You almost have to temper their enthusiasm right. a little bit and make some adult decisions, but it's hard to tame that enthusiasm when they want to play. McQuiston on to try the extra point. The kick is up. And that kick is good. So it is 28 to 25. The West with the lead here with 8.08 to go. And I don't think we've seen all the offense yet. I kind of doubt it. I, I mean, you know, the East is going to come out wheeling the football. If the East doesn't score, then you're going to see the West go into the lockdown mode. You won't see the ball probably go in the air from them. You'll see a lot of Mark, Marcus Johnson uh, running the football and uh, probably Jake Conrad. And, but once again, like I said, we're going to see the ball go in the air now for sure with Joe Lawless. So 8.08 to play here in the fourth quarter. So a three-point lead here, and now you got to think about it. Brandon Demuth, Brendan Demuth is a good field goal kicker. Yes. If they want to tie the game, you know, if it gets into that type of situation. I mean, that, that option's available. I mean. And we've seen that through the years in this game. Possibly, but uh, I think the whole thing, you know, Coach Zontini is, he's, he's not thinking. He's of, not thinking about tying. He's not thinking about a field goal unless it's fourth and long on down on the 20 or something like that. Then it becomes a possibility. So McQuiston to kick it away for the West. As ball's going to be picked up. The East on the run. Zach Denham, 32. That's a great play by him fielding the football like that. Yeah, you Denham. That thing bounces loose down there, rolls down in there, he picks it up. Now they got great field position out on the 38 yard line. Little things like that make differences. Denham, in of course, games. was a wide receiver for the New Philadelphia Quakers, so used to handling the football. They had him up there where he could do some damage, and he certainly did a great job there. So it's first down and 10 for the East at the 38 yard line with an even eight minutes to go. The East trailing by three. As Lawless. Across the middle, and it's going to be intercepted by Marcus Johnston. Pass intended for Neidig, and uh, Johnston doing a nice job covering Neidig, and it's an INT, and that, I believe, is turnover number five for the West tonight. Turnover 
So now you talked about lockdown mode. This might be it. This could be it right here. I, I just I was just going to say the East had to avoid the turnover and uh, Lawless threw his third interception of the night. Uh, once again, there's been two interceptions in the second and a half, both made by the uh, West squad, and the uh, West has avoided the turnover in the second half. Yeah, I misspoke. I had the two teams uh, mixed up there. So Rankin had better get rid of it or find a hole to get back to the line of scrimmage. He, he, just, he just ran 40 yards to lose two. <laughs> but the good news is he burned about 25 seconds right. on the clock. That's, that's the good thing. If you're Coach Eric Brock, this has got to be a big thrill. You know, you're on the verge. Still a lot of time to go, but right. you've got an opportunity to win this game, and that's a big honor to be asked to coach number one, and to win it's even better. I think if I, if I was Coach Brock, I'd like to see the ball in uh, the hands of uh, Probably number Mark. 27 right there and let him just kind of do his thing from here on out. Now would not be a good time to have to punt the football. No, we haven't had a punt yet. Not a, you're not going to have to punt with, you know, with a guy like this right there. Well, Johnston gets some yardage back. Gain of about seven. Second, uh, third down and about uh, seven. The passing game has not been very effective for the West, so... Uh, uh, this half, it's, you know, they've better. gotten out of, you know, little out patterns and short passes. You'll probably see that again here. Maybe a little swing pass to uh, Johnston here. Or something into the flats. Well, penalty, that's what you didn't want to see. So a five-yard penalty will move it back to about third and 11. Now it puts you in that situation that you're – if you want to pick up the first down, you're probably going to have to throw it. If he wants to just kill some more time and then punt the football and let his de defense take over, then that's what you'll see. So third down and 11. And 6.06 to go here. Ball on the 43-yard line. Rankin in trouble, rolling to his right, and knocked down at the 40-yard line. So we've got a timeout on the field here. I'm not sure if we have a penalty possibly on the uh, East squad. I don't see a, do I see a flag down over there, Bruce? At least from my vantage point, I don't see a flag. A personal foul on oh, the man, east. That's, that's a killer right there. Gives them a first down when they would have had to, we would have seen our first punt of the game. Wow. What an inopportune uh, time to lose composure. Yes. So that really changes things as to the East having another chance to now well, the West can just keep cranking away on the clock. Yep. The East is going to have to think about burning timeouts now to save some clock. Marcus Mamarella back in at quarterback. He hands it off to Johnston. And I think as uh, you've been a proponent of here the last... 10 minutes, uh, I think 27 is going to get a workout here. He'd be my man. He'd be my man of choice in this situation. Well, they bring Mamarella in, who's had a little more experience in these types of situations. And, and he's a good runner, a real good runner off of a, you know, you keep handing to Johnston, handing to Johnston, and pull it out of there and let Mamarella take it around the corner. And so of course, Coach Baxter would cringe at that, but Coach Brock would like it. Conrad has some running room, gets to the outside. And he's taken down around the 25-yard line. And another first down for the West. 
Might see fatigue starting to set in here a little bit with the E squad. Taking that pounding of those big running backs of the West. Yeah, they uh, have done a good job. And, and I'll tell you what, they have had an offensive line that is as big as any as you're going to see. Yeah, for sure. And as quick as any you're going to see. And they have really done a great job opening some holes. Yes, they have. A lot of effort on their part. Second down and six. Mamorella is going to take it himself. Rather, that was first down and ten. The scoreboard wrong there so the carry for about uh, we'll call it four second down and six just a nice solid drive here aided by a personal foul that really put the east in the hole yeah that was that was just huge because it was on a third down and would have been forced from the west to punt and let him right out of the hole. Mamarella looked to pass. Now he's going to take it himself. Needs to just stay in bounds and just uh, hit the deck. So tackle there by Nick Von Allman and Trenton Bird. And it'll be third down and 10 after the loss of four. So you wonder if uh, the East might want to take a time out here, stop the clock. They've got three left. You uh, can't save them for uh, the season, so you might as well use them. This is a big down here. Got to stop them. But well, you I, know they're going to run two plays. Uh, yeah, they're in four down territory no matter what here. He's not going to try a field goal. He's not going to punt the ball. He's going to run two plays here. They come out in the spread here on third down and seven. Mamarella in the shotgun. Run pass options. Got a man open. Ricky Maz has the first down and gets knocked out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Good move to get that first down. He curled back, and I yeah. thought they were going to take it away from him. Uh, but he was able to recover and got the first down. That ought to just about do it. They'll, they'll have to use their, you know, their timeouts now if they're, if they're going to have any chance. Keep them out of the end zone and, and get the ball back. So first down and 10 from the east 12-yard line. The West looking to take a one-game lead in the all-time series here if they can pick up a win tonight. Now you see the eye formation. Conrad in the eye back. Behind Mackey, that's a big blocking yeah. back. Conrad, some running room at the five and steps it in from 12 yards out. So that, that put, might have done yeah, it. Yep. Just warm down. You know, you can see it here late in the fourth quarter that the... Uh, Let's take another look at it, Bruce. Just that power eye formation. And Conrad, he's supposed to run up inside tackle. You can see Mackey looking to, for the kick out. He gets outside. Good block right there. He gets outside. A lot of speed for, for a big kid right there. Nice run. McQuiston on to try the extra point. And it is good. So that makes it a 10-point lead. Well, makes it 35 to 25. So now with 2.20 to go, the East has got a big task. They need two scores. Yep. So the West will kick it away. Coming up, we'll have the Texas Roadhouse postgame show. 
we'll be naming our uh, Manor Restaurant MVPs as well. So that's coming up here in just a couple of moments. So, trying to get this uh, kickoff organized here. A lot of high points for both teams. Marcus Johnston with uh, a couple of touchdowns. Colin Engstrom with a touchdown for the West. As that's going to go into the end zone, another touchback. So the East will have to go 80 yards in a very short time. Set up by that uh, interception. And then, of course, the unfortunate, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that kept the drive alive to uh, give the West a 10-point lead here late in the fourth quarter. So Lawless, who's gone all the way at quarterback, looks to the outside. Sunderland has it. And to the 25-yard line. East is going to try and continue to run the hurry up here. Gain of about five, second out and five. Lawless looks to the outside. Pleshi is there. Has the catch. Steps out of bounds. A little bit short of the first down. And it's right on the 30. It ought to be a first down. Yep. First oh, okay. Down. Where the marker was and where the ball was didn't look uh, that way, but it is a first down for the East. Minute 43 to go. The West with a 10 point lead. Down the sideline, a tiptoe sideline catch by Tyler Sunderland. Spectacular catch there at about the 48-yard line of the West. 22-yard gain. So another first and 10 for the East. Better yet, he was out of bounds to stop the clock. Sunderland again, this time they keep him inbounds. And now we get a little pushing and shoving in front of the bench there and uh, break it up quickly. McEwen to the outside, has a little bit of running room, gets stopped about the 35 yard line. So Lawless handing out the signals to everybody with a minute three to go. Pileshi to the outside. Those little three yard run routes to the outside, probably you're not going to get it done. Not doing anything but stopping the clock by getting out of bounds, but let you regroup a little bit. Been a good game, though, all in all. Both yeah. teams have played well. and uh, You know, a couple of unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. Things getting a little chippy here at the end, you know. Lawless to McEwen. Down to the 25 and then knocked out of bounds, which I'm sure they did not want to do as Ricky Maz and Andrew Bache make the stop. Another first down for the East. Yeah, you might as well stick one in here at the end and make it interesting. Have a little onside kick. You know, how much do you practice an onside kick when you have 
have an all-star game. I suppose you have to think about I, that. I mean, you got all athletes, so you know yeah. you can you can figure it, it out on the fly. It's like the old Sandlot thing. You draw it up in the sand. We used to have the old double seven. The pass is incomplete. With 44 seconds to go. Thirty-five twenty-five. the East trailing the West, second down and 10. Lawless again calling out the signals. Lawless across the middle, Nightig is there, broken up by Johnston, and a nice play there. Marcus Johnston showing that he's a pretty good defensive back as well as, you know, a running back. Third down and 10. East still trying to salvage another score here before the end of the game. This time they'll throw it out into the flat. And the ball's knocked away. Jarred loose out there and play by Ricky Maz, a pass intended for Sam Fondrius, and it'll be fourth down and 10. So a last gasp effort here for the East squad with 32 seconds to go. I tell you what, I've been uh, very impressed with uh, Joe Lawless. His receivers have done a good job. You know, you think after this many months of not playing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it'd be a little bit different, but it uh, looks like they haven't skipped a beat as the fourth down pass is incomplete. And the West will take it over with 26 seconds to go. So about one more snap. And then we'll be ready for the Texas Roadhouse postgame show. So stick around with us here after the game. As the West can start to celebrate a little bit, Eric Brock of Newcomers Town, the head coach, and uh, certainly should be congratulated. Bob Zantini also doing a nice job. So Caleb Rankin will take the final snap. And that is going to do it. There will be no need to run another play. This one is going to be in the books. So our final score here from Woody Hayes Quaker Stadium, it'll be the West 35, the East 25. We'll come back, wrap it up for you with the Texas Roadhouse postgame show. We'll also announce our Manor Restaurant MVPs, one for each team. Coming up in a moment, stay with us on Big Time Sports. Wallach Hairstyling introduces new Extreme Lashes Eyelash Extensions. Lengthen, fill out, color, even highlight and layer your lashes. Create the appearance of a brighter, more rested eye, giving you a younger look. Or pamper yourself with a relaxing pedicure. Including a massaging chair, stimulating Whirlpool foot bath, a therapeutic foot and leg massage, and artistic nail design. And for thicker, fuller hair, ask about laser hair stimulation. It stops hair loss and stimulates growth safely. All of these services are available now at Wallach Hairstyling in New Philadelphia. Hitchcock Sound Company of New Philadelphia is now offering complete mobile DJ services. Wedding receptions, anniversaries, block parties, graduations, team dances, or any other events. All popular music styles from classic oldies to the latest popular teen tunes. Let our mobile DJ make your event an event to remember. 
Mobile DJ is the division of Hitchcock Sound Company. Call now, 330-364-3882. Begin your home improvements today with a call to B&B Wood Products and Home Remodeling. B&B offers locally qualified and insured workmanship with 40 years experience. Make your dream kitchen a reality with all new countertops and cabinets. Come back high heating bills with all new vinyl replacement windows. Or imagine your living room with a new hardwood floor. And update that old bathroom and make it a room you're proud of again. Make the intelligent call to B&B Wood Products and Home Remodeling. When you're looking for a car, truck, or a van, think Ferris. Think Ferris. When you're thinking about 0% financing and free maintenance, you've got to be thinking Toyota. Right now, Toyota is offering their two-year premium maintenance plan for free when you buy or lease a new Camry, Corolla, Prius, or RAV4. Bring your new Toyota to the Ferris Service Department every 5,000 miles for the first two years, and there's no charge for regular maintenance. You'll also find 0% financing for up to 60 months on a wide range of Toyotas, including the best-selling 2011 Toyota Camrys. Free maintenance and 0% financing. Two great reasons to think Ferris. Ferris Toyota, on the Wabash, New Philadelphia. Free maintenance plan not available in all models. 0% financing with approved credit through Toyota Financial Services. Not all buyers will qualify. Must take delivery by August 2nd, 2010. Welcome back to Woody Hayes Quaker Stadium as we get ready to wrap this one up. The 33rd annual Times Reporter Charities All-Star Football Games in the books. The West beating the East 35-25. to It's time now for the Texas Roadhouse postgame show. And the numbers, as they always do, will uh, tell the story again tonight, Bruce. Yeah, pretty much uh, what we expected from the beginning. You know, the running of the of the uh, West squad, 46 runs, 250 yards. They threw the ball effectively, particularly in the second half, 8 of 13 for 65 yards, total of 315 yards. Four turn turnovers, but the big key, all those came in the first half. For the East, they ran the ball only 18 times for 57 yards. Uh, passing 29 of 48, 275 yards for a total of 332 yards. Big key, three turnovers. Two of those are pass interceptions in the second half to thwart drives. And, of course, that adds up to the winning score of the West, 35, East 25. So, well-played game. The West coming out on top. And this has been the post-game show brought to you by Texas Roadhouse on Bluebell Drive Northwest in New Philadelphia. Stop by. Get a great meal and see our friends at the Texas Roadhouse. We're going to wrap it up now by naming our Manor Restaurant MVPs, one for each team for the East Squad. It's Joe Lawless of Tuscarawa Central Catholic High School. And then up for the West Squad, Marcus Johnston of Coshocton is the pick, as both of them had outstanding games. So congratulations both to Joe and to Marcus. Well, that is going to do it from Woody Hayes Quaker Stadium. Our first broadcast of the high school football season is in the books. The West, a winner over the East, 35-25 to in the Times Reporter Charities All-Star Football Game. For Bruce Winter and the rest of our big-time sports team, I'm Scott Robinson saying so long, everybody.